right, so now we're on to step four, implement Microsoft government for CMMC. So up until now, you see step one's taken us two weeks, right? Identify what existing contract requirements I have and what maybe the future of the business needs. Step two, which step two is, Sam, over to you. Uh, identifying assets. There we go, identifying assets. So that typically takes about four weeks um, to do, right? Making sure that we're classifying different assets from CUI to specialized assets to security protection assets to contractor risk managed assets. And then step four is, or step three is, making sure that we're picking the right environment, right? All in or enclave for the different types of data that we have. Yep. Step four, let's implement, right? This is the, this is the longest process here. Yeah. Because it takes a long time to do this implementation because we're going to do it right, right? So let's take a look at big acronym and let's first take a look at the licensing. So when we're talking about the Microsoft GovCloud, a lot of small businesses want a one-stop shop, right? They want to be able to make sure that their users are compliant, mm -hmm. make sure that security is top of mind, but they also want to make sure that the productivity and functionality is as integrated as possible throughout the business. And that's where this really kind of takes takes heart, right? The licensing for the GovCloud. So we typically break it up into two different personas. The corporate user with or with a company device, laptop or desktop, something like that. And on the other side of the house, we do frontline or first line collaboration user. Or maybe it's a user sitting on a contract using government furnished equipment. I always use the joke, it's the guy sitting there looking for potluck emails and pay stubs, right? Don't really need a lot of uh, a, a lot of different types of uh, information, right? Maybe pulling an HR document down occasionally. So we can either go all in with Microsoft, right? Have that integrated productivity suite, or we can look below and you see all the different icons from all the other. Now, if you remember earlier in the presentation, we talked about vetting cloud providers. And I mentioned that I went through the wonderful task of vetting quite a few when I first came to Summit 7. So going all in with Microsoft and GCC High, you have the ability to start moving other third-party applications off right? Because that capability has been vetted. It's in the appropriate cloud. The access has been vetted if you have export control data and the productivity suite all lives within the same environment, right? With not the need, with, with no need fans or integrations that the company may or may not support, right? These third-party vendors, a lot of them don't even support their integration in GCC high. So that's another question to ask. So next up, implementing uh, the actual cloud services. This is the fun part, right? This is the part we do all the time. So big acronym, let's take a look at them. The first thing we're gonna do is identity and access management here. So this is, we're gonna use Azure Active Directory, we're gonna use Azure Multi-Factor, we're gonna use conditional access policies to make sure that only authorized users are accessing this environment. And they're doing so with a multi-factor challenge and even going as far as making sure they have to log in from the United States, right? Very important things that we wanna put in place from an implementation. Next up, we want to talk about endpoint management, right? So we have identity, check the box. We got multi-factor, check the box. Now we want to manage the devices that are going to have CUI on them, right? So this is your iOS device, your Android device, your Windows computer, your Mac that's out there. And we want to make sure that all the controls are applied to those devices. We want to make sure that the endpoint itself is protected, right? Endpoint logging is in place. But Windows Hello for Business allows us to multi-factor that to the desktop which also is a very popular cybersecurity insurance requirement that we've seen coming out more recently. So two birds with one stone on that one. Next up, we have data protection. So we have users, we have devices or endpoints. Now we need to protect the data, both inside the organization and data being sent outside of the organization. And we do that through a few different ways. Data loss prevention policies to look for very specific types of data like CUI or ITAR, or maybe even intellectual property, right? That you don't want getting out. Azure information protection to label, classify, encrypt, add headers and footers and watermarks and all that great stuff. Even go as far as disabling printing on certain documents if you want. And then Defender for Office 365. This allows us to uh, have ransomware protection for my email and for the files coming in and out of Office 365 as I'm syncing down to my devices. Last up is Azure government side of the equation, right? So the Azure government side of the equation is virtual infrastructure that we want to deploy. So do I have a server that's been sitting on-prem for a while, right? Maybe I need to make sure that that's compliant. Maybe that has CUI on it. Maybe I have an application server that's been running my ERP system or CRM that I need to migrate and make compliant. 
Well, we can move the operating system and the virtual server, if you will, into Azure, apply all the controls to it, and then make sure that you're going to meet CMMC level two compliance with that through a wide variety of tools. So this gives us quite a suite of different technologies that we can use all wrapped up in Microsoft 365 GCC high and Azure Gov, right? Not needing dependencies on a bunch of third parties to get you towards compliance. So now, big acronym has said, I'm going in with GCC high. Awesome. We're going to go and we're going to implement something that we've done, again, quite a few times, right? So our implementation that we do addresses these things that you just saw here on the screen, but also gives you a CMMC and NIST control map at the end of it. Right. Technology is great to implement, but if I can't back it up with documentation, which Joy will talk about here in just a minute, it doesn't really do me much good. Right. Because I got to show an assessor how I'm actually using this and how it's actually implemented. Right. So you can see this implementation touches all sorts of different devices and all sorts of different systems and even users on a daily basis. Right. So we're going to make sure to have the most holistic solution that we can provide using the fewest amount of tools. So after it's implemented, then we migrate, right? So we're going to either migrate from existing collaboration services like Office 365 Commercial or Gmail or GoDaddy or Rackspace, all these different options. Or we're going to migrate maybe existing virtual infrastructure into the cloud, right? So maybe I have a server on-prem and I want to make sure that that stays compliant. I'm going to move it into Azure, right? Maybe I have an on-prem exchange server. I need to move the mail. Let's go to GCC High, right? in our compliance boundary, which is gonna be CMMC level two, DFAR 7012.